Hello everyone, welcome back to Laser Monkey, and today I'll be breaking down Patrick Ponce's 6.14 official average from Lower Moreland Winter 2019. This is a really nice average. A few of the solves are poorly executed and have some inaccurate decisions, but a couple of these solves are just brilliant, especially the first and the last one. The first one is really efficient and has a nice creative last layer solution, and the last one is really high TPS and just a perfect solve in my opinion. So let's get right into it. Yes! Okay. For the first solve, Patrick did white cross. So he's got his cross pieces here, 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 and here. And you can see that these two are already easily set up solved relative to each other, just a D2 away. And then when you solve this like this, you can move this over to insert this edge, move it over and insert this edge. So that's exactly what he does, but he does it from a better grip, doing the B like this, and then looking ahead to this first F2L pair. So as he finishes solving that, he does these two into the back. And you'll notice that a lot of top speed cubers always solve their pairs into the back because it really helps with look ahead. You don't need to be looking at this, you know it's solved. So now he has to decide between the green red and the orange blue. And he goes for the green red because if he had solved the orange blue like this, he set up with a really bad case for this one. And I'm sure he didn't see that this thing would get paired up, which is exactly why he goes for the green red. Because when you get the green red, you'll see that once you insert this, you're gonna separate these two. So that's exactly what he does. And it sets these two up really nicely. And then these two are set up. And now he does something pretty interesting. Most of you might just do the OLL algorithm for this, but Patrick saw that these two are opposite and these two are adjacent. So he can actually solve edges here and give himself a really nice, just basically a COM, which is a really easy, really easy ZBLL. So he does the ALG to solve edges, which is the same ALG as this OLL. You can see these two are opposite and these two are adjacent. So you can just solve it like that. And that's exactly what he does here. He sees this, he quickly solves edges, and now he gives himself a very easy ZBLL. And this last layer solution is a lot faster than doing the obvious alternative, which is to do this OLL and then do PLL. That is so many more moves. Fine. For the second solve, Patrick does white cross again. So he's got his cross pieces here and here. And you can see that they're all about one move away from being set up on their opposite center. This one is already set up. This one is one move away. And these two are also both one move away. And what you can do is actually solve this pair, which is also one move away from being solved, while solving the cross. And this is a pretty nice cross plus one F2L pair solution. So what he does is he sets these up all on their opposite center, sets this one solved, solves this pair, and then finishes up the cross. Next, he's gonna solve this one into the back. And the whole time he's doing this, he's gonna be looking ahead. And now he's got these two, which are probably a pretty good one to solve, but he goes for these two instead. And the way he solves these two actually solves these two at the same time. I don't know if he planned that, but if he did, that is pretty impressive. And now that he's got this one solved, he could just insert it, but he saw that these two would be much easier to insert um, now because if he inserts this one first, he has to rotate, insert it, and then he doesn't have a perfect solution for this. But if he instead inserts this one right away, like this, he doesn't really mess up this pair and he can just solve that one next. It's a very good solution. OLL and PLL are very standard here. Same. For the third solve, Patrick did red cross. His cross pieces are here, here, here and here, and he's got this free pair already built. So he's gonna try and take advantage of that, preserve it while he's solving his cross. 
So he's got these three, which are all one move away from being solved relative to each other, and then this one, which belongs over here, so he can insert that quickly with just a d2. Next, he's going to want to set up to solve this pair into a spot that doesn't obstruct his look ahead, which as we know is in these back two slots, because you can't really see these, but at least you can see these, and these are already solved, so you don't need to look at them. So here he does a UW prime to insert this one in the back. If he had done a D prime, then he has to rotate to insert this one in the back, and so instead he just does a UW prime. Then he inserts this one right into the back. He saw this corner, probably already saw this edge, so he's going to solve those right away into the back. And here's a really important note. At this point, he saw this corner, and he saw this edge, and instead of just inserting this like this, which would give him a terrible, terrible case for this next F2L, he does an extra U prime here to set these two into a much nicer case when he inserts this pair. You can see that now these are opposite from each other, which is the optimal F2L insertion case. And so now he gets a really, really nice case there. And that's a little micro adjustment that I highly recommend you make in your solves. Next, he's got this thing and he doesn't want to solve this in a way that messes up the edges so he solves it like this temporarily taking out this pair but this is a common known trick where you can just insert it right away but instead here he pauses and tries to get himself a case where he might be able to recognize the ZBLL so instead of just inserting it right away he does an extra U but it didn't work out too well for him. He just has a COLL here. You can recognize this by the two opposite here, and or the two same, and you know the two opposite. So he does that COLL, and then here he noticed this was a U perm, this U perm, so he just canceled into it. For the fourth solve, Patrick did yellow cross. His cross pieces are here, 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 and here. And his free F2L pair is right here. So he's going to solve his cross while preserving this pair, just like this, solving these three relative to each other, then making space for this one with a D prime, and then solving the cross. Now in this case, if I were him, I probably would have done a U2 prime to insert this into the back, but he did a D2, U2, and insert it into the front. And now he's gonna have a really hard time looking ahead. So he saw this one, and he's gonna move it over and solve this one. But now he's solving two diagonal pairs, which means that he now has to solve two diagonal pairs. And it's really hard to look ahead for two diagonal pairs because you have to do a lot of rotations just by the nature of the locations of the pieces. If he had solved two next to each other in the back like he did in his previous solves, he would not have so many look ahead issues. It's a lot easier to solve two adjacent pairs and they're also a lot more often some nice very efficient solutions to two adjacent pairs. But anyways, he solves these two. And here he probably should have done a U2 prime before inserting this pair. In the solve he did this, which gives him this case. It's got luckily a pretty easy solution to solve into the back but if he had done an extra u prime here he gives himself a really fast three move insert and so that's what i think he should have done instead he did this and then he's got to know this back insert for that very specific case which he did and now he did ol which happens to permute corners but i'm not sure that really matters here And now he's got an easy PLL. Oh. That's Rob. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Whoa, that TPS. This is a really, really nice solve because not only is it really efficient, but Patrick did all of these moves instantly. This solve is well over 10 TPS and it's got a pretty efficient solution, not really any mistakes here. So he's got a pretty easy yellow cross. His cross pieces are here, 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 and here. And so you can see that these three are solved relative to each other. And now he's going to try and solve this pair. And now a lot of you might try something like moving this over and then inserting it, but then you're going to get an awkward case. 
to solve this F2L pair. So what he does is he does an X cross in a very creative way. He's gonna solve the edge, and then he's gonna solve the corner in the spot where the two adjacent edge pieces on this bottom layer are gonna be that correspond to this location. So he's going to insert this edge while solving the cross, and then he's gonna insert this corner into the back between the red, the red and blue, which solves this X cross, and he's gonna do a UW prime to set up for solving this pair and also put this in the back where it's out of sight, out of mind. Now these two. And then he rotates to do these two. And here I think it would have been really nifty if he had seen these two and just canceled in like that. But instead, he uh, he's human. He just inserted those right away, then paused a little, and then solved these two. Doing this at such a high TPS is really very impressive. Then he has the same OLL that he had in the previous solve, but he does it from a different angle, showing that versatility, and then a T prime. So that's about it for my breakdown of Patrick Ponce's 6.14 official average. It's a really nice average, especially solves one and five. Solve one was really nice for the efficiency and the last layer solution, pretty creative. The other solves are solid. Maybe the third and fourth solves don't have the most efficient solutions, but solve five is really a masterclass in efficiency. So I'm very impressed with the TPS in that last solve, the efficiency overall, and yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. This is Laser Monkey, out.